Chloe, what on earth are you doing? What's wrong, Susan? I can't believe you do that with my grandson. What do you mean? I didn't do anything. You are pregnant, yet you still dare to eat junk food? Don't you worry about your son. What if something happens to him? What? We are having dinner at a restaurant, not junk food. Besides, this restaurant is also very famous for its fresh and clean food. What could possibly happen? You're overthinking. Why aren't you being more careful? If you don't prioritize the baby's safety, I'll have to worry about my grandchild. You're cold-blooded. How can you say that? I'm certainly concerned about my baby. Don't worry about that too much. Why can't I worry? You're pregnant and you're still going out like this? What if you have an accident or consume something random that affects my grandchild? If something happens to my grandson, I'll make you guys regret that. Susan, you're worrying excessively. Eric is coming with me. He will take care of me. This heartless Eric! Why did he let his pregnant wife go out? What's wrong if I go out, Susan? I'm still very careful. I just went out for dinner and sightseeing. I didn't do anything heavy. Eric took very good care of me too. Susan, don't worry, okay? You dare go out when you're pregnant. I can't help but worry about my grandchild. When you're pregnant, you should stay at home and don't go anywhere. If anything happens to your body or your health, I will lose my grandson. I can't have that happen. Many things can happen without you knowing. Oh my God, Susan. Today is our wedding anniversary. We just went out for dinner to celebrate. I need to change my mood. Being pregnant makes me so tired and I need to relieve my mood. Do you understand it? Relieve the mood? Not put my grandchild in a dangerous situation. Please, listen, Susan. We finished dinner and nothing happened. During the meal, I also ate a nutritious diet according to the doctor's advice. I, on I only sit and resting, not moving around much. My husband will take the food for me, and I only eat things that are good for the baby. Who knows what you ate? You could have eaten junk and hidden it from me. How could you think like that? Do you think I lied to you? I didn't see you eat directly, so I can't be sure if it's healthy food or not. So no matter what I say, you won't believe it. We're going to go sightseeing. I can't talk with you anymore. How dare you say that to your mother-in-law? Sightseeing? I can't believe it. After what I said, you're still not going home? Then when do you plan to get back home? After going sightseeing for a while, we will return. We'll return around 12 o'clock. Don't wait for us. You're coming back home at 12 o'clock at night? You're pregnant and you're coming home so late? It will affect the fetus. Go home immediately. Susan, don't be so unreasonable. Today is our wedding anniversary. It's okay if you go out for a bit. Go home immediately. Are you defying me? I didn't mean that. But you can't force me to do what you just want because you're worried about your grandchild. I need to be comfortable for the baby to be healthy. Are you still arguing with me? You want to relax and you're putting my grandson in danger? You are unprincipled. If you don't take care of it, just give it birth so I'll take care of it and then you can do whatever you want. However, you're pregnant now, so you have to be very careful and listen to me absolutely. Stop arguing with me and go home immediately. I'm still being careful. Why can't you believe me? I can't believe you guys. Stop arguing with me and go home immediately. Okay, fine. We're going home. You should have done that sooner. Hurry up. Chloe, I've bought a lot of good stuff for you. Thank you, Susan. What did you get? I got powdered milk for pregnant women, some supplies, frankincense, and some items for newborns. Agar wood? For pregnant women? Yes, I heard that agar wood helps relieve stress, headaches, and dizziness. All symptoms of pregnant women. I think it will be better for my grandchild if you relax and feel comfortable. Okay. Susan? I received a bottle of this medicine from a divine physician who advised that consuming this medicinal water can be beneficial for both the pregnant mother and the child in her womb. Where did you get this divine physician? A friend of mine told me about him. I'm not sure about this medicine, Susan. What if it's a scam? Maybe we should consult the doctor first. What do you mean? My friend said that she bought this medicine for her daughter-in-law and it led to a healthy delivery. So you can rest assured and take it. Really? Have you met that daughter-in-law? How is she now? 
Are you suspecting me of buying fake medicine to harm you? That's my nephew, so of course I wouldn't do anything to harm him. It's not what you think. I'm just worried about my baby. Medicines without labels or manufacturing locations can be very dangerous. It's very possible that you were scammed. You worry too much. Do you think that I'm that easy to fool? This is a real person testifying, so what are you worried about? Have you met the girl who took this medicine? Her children too. I haven't met her yet, but the story she told me is very believable. I believe she didn't lie to me. You're trusting blindly, Susan. You can't just buy medicine from an unknown source because your friend told you to and expect me to take it. It's very dangerous for your grandchild. Aren't you worried? Of course I'm worried. If you're concerned about not taking it, then take some supplements I bought from the doctor. I still have some of the supplements you bought last time and haven't finished them yet. You bought four or five times of supplements and now you're buying more? The more the better. Just take them all at once. You don't have to worry about gaining weight. That's also a concern, but taking too much medicine isn't always good. It can have many other side effects. What harm can supplements do? They provide necessary nutrients for the body. It won't affect anything. Maybe you'll gain a little weight, but you should worry more about the baby's health than your weight. You're married, and now you're pregnant. Why are you so concerned about your appearance? Susan, what are you talking about? I don't care about my weight that much. I'm worried about my child. I'm concerned that taking too many supplements will harm the fetus. Too much of a good thing can be harmful. Okay, if you don't want me to help or interfere in taking care of and raising your children, just say so. You've rejected everything I've suggested and you don't agree. You're calling me superficial. I want to do what's best for you and your child, but it seems unnecessary. You don't need my help, right? I never said you were superficial. I didn't mean that. I really appreciate you looking out for my child. However, pregnancy is a very sensitive time, so we should be cautious when it comes to buying medicine and supplements for pregnant women. I just want us to be careful and make informed decisions about what we consume during pregnancy. Huh? It's the same thing. You're just afraid of everything because you don't know anything. Just take the supplements. It won't harm you. Have I ever done anything to harm you? Okay. I'll listen to you. You should be. Remember to use agar wood. I know. I light it up. When your husband gets off work, tell him to come over to my house to pick it up. Yes, Susan. I'll let him know. How was the prenatal checkup? Did the doctor mention when you might give birth? The doctor said it's impossible to predict precisely. It could be three weeks later or sooner. Three weeks later? Hmm, that would be around the end of August or early September. Try to aim for a September 1st birth date. Huh? Why September 1st? Well, I consulted a fortune teller, and they said that to have a boy, the child must be born in September. If the baby is born on the first day of the month, they'll be successful in the future. So try to have the baby on September 1st. No, you must give birth on September 1st. What? Do you realize what you're saying? How can I control the day I give birth? You act like it's impossible. Just try to hold on until September 1st and give birth then. Susan, what kind of nonsense is this? Please don't be superstitious anymore. Why would you trust fortune tellers? Most of them are just scams. Nonsense? I got my fortune told at a very reputable place. This fortune teller is very famous and known by many people. He's famous because he can predict the future. Did you believe him just because you heard rumors? Not at all. I've seen it with my own eyes. He predicted that I wouldn't find my wallet, and it turned out I couldn't find it. It's like he had a special power. That could be coincidental. Maybe you misplaced your wallet or it got lost or stolen. Have you checked your home yet? Even so, he was right about me not finding my wallet. Because you haven't gone home to look for it. Not only that, there's more. He predicted an event for me, and it actually happened. Oh, what was the prediction? He said that two minutes later, a black cat would run past me, and a boy chasing the cat would bump into me. He told me to take three steps to the left to avoid the collision, but I didn't believe him, and guess what? The black cat ran past, the boy chased the cat, and he bumped into you. Exactly, so he can genuinely predict the future. I'm not entirely convinced, Susan. It still sounds like a scam to me. 
You shouldn't trust these people so easily. I'm not gullible. It's just that his predictions seem so accurate that I couldn't help but believe him. Anyway, just aim for a September 1st birthday for the baby's sake. Typically, you should aim for the first day of the month. Giving birth on that day is believed to result in a boy. Regardless of whether it's a boy or a girl, it's okay, Suzanne. They're all your grandchildren. But boys can achieve great things. Suzanne, that's a bit of a biased viewpoint. Girls can also achieve great things. The gender of the child doesn't matter. What's essential is how we raise them. Well, I understand that. But try for a September 1st birthday. Don't give birth too early. I can't control it. When the baby is ready to come out, they'll come out. Just try to hold on until that day. Trust me, I only want what's best for you and your children. I can't make any promises, Susan. Keep my words in mind. I only have your best interests at heart. Now, I'll be heading home. Goodbye, Chloe. Goodbye, Susan. How's the baby? The fever just subsided. She was sweating a lot and was very tired. Fortunately, the fever has gone down. Have you given the baby any medicine yet? I gave her fever-reducing medicine and cleaned her up. She's currently asleep. My poor grandchild. If only you had been born on the first, maybe the baby wouldn't have had this fever. Susan, why do you keep bringing up the day I gave birth? I'm just saying, it didn't happen. You insisted on being born one day earlier. I told you to aim for the first, but you refused. Being born on the last day of the month isn't ideal at all. Maybe that's why the baby has a fever. Isn't it because of you? What did I do? On the day that I gave birth, all because of your blind superstition. Both the baby and I were put at risk. Have you forgotten? You blocked the door to prevent me from entering the delivery room. You insisted on waiting for another two hours until the first day. By that time, my water had broken for 20 hours and labor pains had already started. Thankfully, I was rushed into the delivery room in the nick of time. The doctor said any later we might have lost the baby. Are you trying to harm both me and the baby? I didn't mean that. Don't say such things. You just needed to hold on for another hour and a half, and the first day would have arrived. Then, maybe the baby wouldn't be sick. It's pointless to reason with you. The baby's fever is spiking again, and I have to take her to the hospital. Absolutely not. Don't take her to the hospital. Are you out of your mind? Why shouldn't I take her to the hospital? The baby has a very high fever and needs urgent treatment. I forbid you to take the baby to the hospital. They'll just inject a bunch of drugs and make the baby even weaker. Let me go buy some leaves. Boil it in hot water and give the baby a bath and she will be fine. What? What's the point of doing that? Leaves? What leaves? Stop believing in folk remedies, please. These are superstitions that can harm babies. There is no scientific evidence to prove that boiling leaves in hot water for a baby's bath when they're sick will cure the illness. If you don't know anything, just be quiet and let me explain. When Eric was a baby, I bathed him in water infused with heated leaves and he didn't get sick anymore. Look at him now. He's a healthy adult, isn't he? You can't use that, Madam, on my child. That approach is very outdated. It's been a long time since her days. Are you arguing with me? Young adults these days don't know how to properly take care of their children. Times have changed significantly. Technology, science, and medicine have advanced, providing medicines to respond to and prevent harmful agents. These medications are used to enhance health and protect children. I don't need to know about all these medicines. You read a few things online, and then you keep giving children all sorts of medications and vaccinations. You're weakening their inherent resistance. That's harming them, not curing them. I agree that overuse of medication is not good, but I disagree with unproven folk remedies. It's very risky for my child to use those methods. And now, if you don't mind, I'm taking my baby to the hospital to get proper medical care. Goodbye. Even after I said all that, you still took her to the hospital. You're weakening your child's health. Chloe! Susan! What did you do? What are you talking about? I don't understand. Yesterday, I left Rena at her house for a while. Why did you feed her while I was gone? I saw that the baby was too skinny, so I gave her some baby food. Maybe your breast milk isn't sufficient or nutritious enough, and that's why the baby looks malnourished. Poor little one. How many times have I 
told you. If you don't know, don't take action. Rina is only four months old. She can't eat solid food yet. Premature weaning can harm a baby's digestive system. You're exaggerating. A few spoonfuls won't hurt her. My grandchild is skinny because of you. Your milk isn't nutritious enough. No harm. She had to be hospitalized because of digestive problems. Even if you mean well, you should find out the correct way. I didn't know it would cause digestive issues. I just wanted to help my niece. You've harmed her. I've forgiven you so many times, but I can't take it anymore. You're interfering too much in raising my children. What? Who took care of you during your pregnancy and after you gave birth? It was me, you ungrateful child. You call that taking care of me? Forcing me and keeping me captive? Isn't it because I cared about your health and your child's health? You worried me by preventing me from going out when I was pregnant, causing me to feel suffocated and stressed, which led to fatigue. You also forced me to take various supplements, including medicine from some quack doctor. He is famous. All of my friends know about him. How can you still trust that scum artist? It's clear that he lied to you. He was arrested for fraud and it was reported on the news. What? That can't be. He has a very good reputation. It's not his reputation. It's your blind trust in that scum artist. I've told you repeatedly that I won't accept it and you still force me to do what you wanted. Haven't you pressured me enough? Why are you now pressuring my husband as well? What's wrong with you? I can't get through to you, so I had to use stronger measures. Of course, I had to resist you. I can't agree with your superstitious beliefs. What superstition? These are the methods used in the past and people grew up healthy using them. I'm tired of arguing with you. I've told you that you can't apply those methods to my children. If you want to use them, give birth to your own child and apply them to them. This is my child, not yours. So disrespectful. How dare you say that to me? I will respect you if you act honorably. However, I know that you used every trick in the book to force me to do what you wanted. What? What nonsense are you talking about? What trick? To make me drink that quack doctor's medicine, you mixed it with orange juice and made me drink it. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it until I had consumed a half bottle of medicine. Each time I drank it, the orange juice tasted strange, but you told me it was because my taste buds had changed during pregnancy. You said it was normal and made me finish the entire glass of orange juice. I almost had a miscarriage. No way! You're exaggerating! How could you almost have a miscarriage with that? I'm telling the truth! Why didn't you tell me sooner? Because I was afraid you'd come up with more methods that would make me lose this child forever. What are you saying? I'm worried about my niece. It's because you're so weak that you can't take the supplements. Now you say it's my fault? Clearly. If you're healthier, it won't affect the child. But the one who makes my body weak is you. You forced and constrained me in ways you thought were right. Even poisoned me. Poisoned? You are exaggerating, making a big deal out of nothing. Poisoning is poisoning. I still have the medicine bottle and the medical examination paper, so don't deny it anymore. That's not it. I'm just worried about you. You're really thick-skinned. Worry about me but harm me. You even harmed my daughter to force me to listen to you. I would never do that. Don't talk nonsense. Maybe I accidentally did something because I didn't know, but it wasn't intentional. You know exactly what you did. You won't spare a four-month-old child either. What are you talking about? I said I wouldn't do anything. You gave my child honey, right? Not at all. That time, she accidentally swiped a bowl of honey. You know, babies around four months old sometimes put things in their mouths to explore. She put her hand in the bowl of honey and put it in her mouth to suck. So you know. Yet you still callous into it. Why is the bowl of honey there? At the time, I was planning to mix it with lemon and honey and drink it. I took the honey and was about to mix it, but the baby cried and I ran out to comfort her, then forgot the bowl of honey beside her. After I went back to squeeze the lemon, an unfortunate incident happened. I know honey is harmful to children under 12 months old. It was an accident. The baby was constipated and fell into a coma. We had to take her to the emergency room. A little honey can't cause enough harm to cause a coma. 
<laughs> At first, I thought it was just unfortunate, but I didn't expect it was you. Do you still blame me? It was all an accident. Accident? You left the bowl of honey there on purpose. You intentionally poisoned my child because I didn't drink fresh turmeric water mixed with baby urine. Cruel things, no humanity. I did not. Do not slander me. Besides, children's urine is good for the body. Turmeric is good for women's health after giving birth. I want to help you avoid postpartum malnutrition. You're crazy. That urine is just waste. It's not good at all. You are truly unscrupulous to the point of harming me and my child. You always say baseless things. I heard you mumbling to yourself on hospital emergency stairs the day my baby got poisoned with honey. You said, with all that honey, she just goes into a coma? If I had known, I would have added more honey. Still want to deny it? You cruel woman! No way! How did you... Wait, you are lying to me. You lied. I didn't say that. <laughs> Look at you hesitating. A lie has no legs. You have no proof. Don't slander me. Want proof? I have recorded the part where you talk about your barbaric behavior. Not true. You're definitely lying. You don't need to deny it anymore. My husband also knew about this. And we have decided to make you pay for that action. What are you guys going to do to me? With this barbaric and inhumane crime, we can completely sue and put you in prison. What? Go to jail? Isn't that a bit too much? I didn't do it on purpose. It's just that you're so stubborn that you don't listen to me. I have dignity too. I just wanted to scare you a little. I didn't mean to put her in a coma. Please believe me. Do you know how much pain Rena was in? How much more pain will she have when she knows that her grandmother poisons her? I'm sorry, Rena. I'm so sorry. It's all because I'm too stubborn and obsessed with incomprehension, so I've caused unforgivable things. It's too late for that. I know I was wrong. I'm sorry, too. Please don't send me to jail. My husband and I discussed it. After all, you are his mother. I don't want him to be a dilemma, so he won't send you to jail anymore. But believe me, I really want to. Thank you so much for forgiving me. No, I won't forgive you for what you did. In the end, we have decided we will never let you meet Rena again. She doesn't need a grandmother like that. What? Never. That's so cruel. She is my grandchild. You know she's your grandchild, but you still harm her? Rena doesn't need such a cruel grandmother. I warn you to stay away from her. I have evidence to sue you. Are you threatening me? Fine, it's okay if I don't see her again. You should be. And don't contact me anymore. If you have anything, please tell my husband instead. I don't want to talk to someone like you anymore. Goodbye. Wait, Chloe, I can change. Give me a chance, please. After cutting off contact with Susan, I took care of Rena according to the doctor's instructions. She is now one year old and completely healthy. We are preparing for Rena's one year birthday party and everything is going smoothly. Our family is very happy. As for Susan, she tried to apologize many times, but I really cannot forgive the person who harmed my child. Maybe in the future, I might change my mind. However, right now, I don't want to have anything to do with that cruel woman anymore. Even my child, I don't want her to be in any danger. Currently, Susan is living alone in a large house. Eric still visits occasionally, but she still has to live alone. That's the price she has to pay for her cruel actions. The outcomes are a direct result of the choices you make. 